Hmm. Wonder how good Brad Racer is in comparison to Super Hang On. Brad Racer or Super Hang On? Well, basically, you're asking yourself the time tested question of Nintendo or Sega. Lots of people will choose Nintendo while well, they're still around today. Sega, they're not really making any new systems. Their last one was the Dreamcast, and that came about a year before PlayStation 2. Well, they're really similar games, I gotta say. I mean, this one's part of the NES Sports series. You can kind of see by the stock label you might find on golf or baseball for the NES. But this is actually the Sega 6-pack, which is uh, Master System games ported onto the Sega Genesis. So, we're going to kind of test it out and see how both of them are. Maybe we'll compare them. Alright, so this is the opening screen. Uh, they give you a choice of two cars, the 328 Twin Turbo and the F1 Machine. They only give you the 328 in the beginning of the game. They don't give you a choice of car. So this is just the demo mode. This is the map. Sunset Coastline Course 1. You get three checkpoints, and you get 45 seconds to get to each checkpoint. So each level is going to take you about you know, two or three minutes. So you're driving down here. The controls are basic. Left is left, right is right, forward is forward. When you press select, it goes 3D. That was a pretty cool feature for a game like this on Nintendo. It's only 8-bit. But even without the 3D effect while pressing select, the cars still come at you in a 3D fashion. And the roads kind of rolling out before you, crashing the cars pretty fun. So it just kind of slides you back onto the screen, and uh, you just kind of keep going. Now, the sounds are pretty cool, but this is the only music you get. And I don't even know how you get that music. I mean, you could watch the screen in 3D if you wanted to. If you had 3D glasses at home, if you wanted to see a 3D review. Well, yeah, you're in the twin turbo car. It's red. And I just ran out of time. Uh, you really won't get anywhere unless you use the boost. And you can pr do that by going forward. I almost got to the first checkpoint. Man, I suck. So this is the select screen. Yeah, arcade mode and original mode. This is Super Hang On, in case you didn't know. You get to choose songs. That was a great feature for this game. Not to mention the graphics just dominate over Rad Racer. I mean, this is on a cartridge with six other games. Well, it's six total. But I'm going pretty fast. I mean, over 200 kilometers per hour on a motorcycle down some random desert highway. Kinda reminds me of Hotel California. So yeah, this is Super Hang On. There's a lot more going on in this environment. I gotta say, off to the side of the road, the graphics are kinda sucking. I mean, there's just those little bars. I mean, eh, it's a desert, at least I got the color scheme right. But it's not as impressive as Rad Racer. But I gotta say, the stuff on the side of the road looks a lot better. It's a lot more attractive game. You don't really get to choose your rider that much in this mode, but in the original mode, you do get to choose your rider and you get to customize your bike and everything. Now if you'll take a listen to the music, it's pretty good. I just hit a checkpoint. It's a lot easier to do in this game. And the music, this is just one of the songs. They have four songs. And a four song selection in a game like this, that's a pretty good variety. And you get to choose the song you listen to while you race. This just happens to be my favorite. And they actually have a bar showing you how close you are, and also what course you're on and what stage. It's a pretty great feature. And the maximum speed you can get is 280 kilometers per hour. I don't know if that's faster than Rad Racer or not. Wasn't really paying that much attention. But I gotta say, I, as far as this goes, I'm really leaning towards the Sega game now. Normally, I like Nintendo better. Sega wins sometimes, but in this one, I'm really leaning towards Super Hang On. Alright, here we are later in the game, and whoa, we're in a city. Alright, we're drag racing now. So really, racing in the city doesn't do a lot for you. It's a harder stage, 
but that's really all it is. If you'll notice, the bar is a lot longer. So you got a lot more checkpoints to cover, which means the game itself is going to last longer. Not to mention it's just a busier environment. I mean, the colors off to the side of the road are the same, the skyline's different, but you do get a variety of obstacles. To look off, you see these little road signs, all the street lights, anything you would kind of find in a city, you're going to find here. They've even got the signs off to the side of the road, which is characteristic for racing games like this. They've actually got a top score to beat, which is pretty cool. I mean, you can set the top score, but it's going to be kind of hard, because they put those in the game to begin with. So if you want to try to beat the high score in a game like this, good luck. I hope your Genesis controllers act better than mine. So, I guess the lesson to learn from playing Super Hang-On is never to drag race in a city. Now, I've got a lot of PlayStation 2 games, but there's a game on Namco Museum that I'd like to review. Pole Position. There you go. Alright, let's play some Pole Position. Now, it's an 82 arcade game, so I'm not really expecting a lot out of it. You know, compared to Rad Racer, which was 1985, and Super Hang On, which was 89. Well, let's just see. Alright, this is the screen for pole position. It's an 82 arcade game. I really wasn't expecting a lot, but surprisingly, it handles a lot better than either of the other two racing games. It was an arcade game, so ported home games are not usually as good as the arcade games. But the graphics on this. I don't know if they're remastered or not. On the back of the box it said 1982. So I don't know if they're remastered. But let's just talk about the game. So to begin with, the graphics are really fluid, your movement is really good, and off to the side of the road you get some pretty cool looking road signs. But the actual side of the road is just green. Flat green. I love how they advertise for Namco in the game. And what's this? But Clyde? Is that what it says? What is this thing? It's like a cheese puff for a hot dog wearing a straw hat. I don't get it. I mean, is it supposed to advertise for something? What was that? I want to say that was a weenie sign, but I'm not really sure. He wishes he was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Well, I'm running out of time, and this is what happens at the end of the game. It shows you your ranking next to everybody else. I actually got halfway through when I stopped to look at road signs. Rad Racer is most definitely the best behaved NES game I have. And it was made by Square. They make Kingdom Hearts. Wow, we're going really far back now. I'm going buy these guys and the bugs. It's awesome. Oh, we're going 3D. Well, out of all these games, Pole Position was pretty good. Whoa, that was violent. None of the other games are that violent. And Super Hang On was definitely my favorite. The graphics are good, it's got music throughout the game, and it's just more appealing in general. Rad Racer, definitely a rad game, but you can go 3D, which is a really great feature. I haven't seen that in another game. Well, the graphics are okay. It's 8-bit. There's not a lot to say for it. It's on Nintendo, but I like Super Hang On the best. It's good ice cream. Very good. I'm getting the DeLorean!